Bonjour my bells and bats, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sheena Perro. I am the author of 13 books across two pen names and multiple genres. And this is Bast. And today we're going to take a peek behind the curtain to look at some of my unfinished objects, my whip bin of shame as a writer. So these are manuscripts that I started and later abandoned for one reason or another. Um, last week I told you about some of the books that I want to write, but I haven't started yet for whatever reason. Um, you can follow the link up here if you want to go watch that. Um, after this video, head on over to the community tab and you'll be able to vote on which project you think I should pick up next. I can't promise I will follow through on the story you pick, but it would definitely help me get a better idea of what you, my audience, want to read and what you're looking for. So without further ado, I have my notes over here and we're going to look at nine books that I want to write, but at this time I haven't been able to finish, but I do have a good head start on them. So book number one is The Wrong Side of the Tracks. This is the second book um, in Mrs. Andrews series, Off the Rails. Um, I have tried to write this book so many times and it's just not coming together. Um, the first book came back, the first book came out in 2018, I think. It might even have been 2017, but um, it's, the second book has just never solidified. And I had so many ideas when I was writing the first book and then it was like, I finished it and I took a break and my brain took a deep breath and exhaled and all the ideas went out with it. So the second book takes place a few years after the first, so around 1870, and it shows our main character in her new life, as well as updates the found family that she gathered around her in the first book. Um, it heavily features, features her daughter, who was 14 in the first book, but in this one, she is an adult. Um, she's become a doctor, but can't practice in the state of New York because no one will hire her. And this was a common problem that a lot of women in the 1870s had. They would get these degrees and then not be allowed to use them. So like a lot of early female doctors, she heads west to the frontier, which is where they can't be picky about who their doctor is. If you've got a medical degree and know what you're doing, then they didn't care so much if you wore a skirt or if you wore pants. That's just the way it was. Um, so meanwhile, her mother is looking for her long lost sister with help from her childhood best friend and the two Pinkerton agents that she meets in the first book that help her solve her husband's murder. So no matter where I start this book or who is narrating, I've tried alternating perspectives. It's just so painfully boring and I don't know why. I need another subplot or something to bring the story together, but nothing I've tried seems to work. So um, if you actually go to order off the rails right now from Amazon, it's no longer listed as the first book in a series because at this point, I've basically written this one off. Um, if one day I'm able to write it, then I will happily list it, but it's just, it's not working for me. So I've kind of written this one off, even though I really want to write it. Okay. Book number two is called Magic in Bedlam. Um, if you are familiar with my jazz punk series, uh, A.J. Marshall series, which is set in the 1920s, and it's like deco punk, steampunk. Um, she teams up with an airship captain and unexpectedly the captain's mother. Um, Felicia has a past, which is hinted at in those books, but I actually wrote Felicia's book first. However, it is deeply problematic. It needs a major redo. Um, Right now, she is an unreliable, unlikable female narrator with a very problematic storyline and something that I think a lot of authors struggle with is just because you write something horrible in your book, that doesn't necessarily mean you condone it. 
and Felicia is someone who has survived brainwashing, trauma, um, assault, a lot of horrible, horrible things. And she came out of it a better person. And trying to explain that to people, that it is not about the things that she suffered, but about what she did with it. Um, a lot of people don't seem to understand that for some reason. So her story needs to be rewritten from scratch in a more palatable, more marketable type of way before I can publish it. Book number three is actually two books, and the series is called Shadows End, and it is about a small town filled with witches in southern Washington. And after my experience with Off the Rails and The Wrong Side of the Tracks, I decided I was no longer going to publish a series book unless I had the next book in the series ready, at least a first draft, before the first book came out. So in this case, I really can't release the first book until the second one is written because this world continues to develop and change. And I'm constantly going backward and making changes to the first book or earlier in the story as a result. Um, if you're a fan of the show Sleepy Hollow several years ago, mostly just season one, we're not going to talk about the other seasons, or Charmed, Practical Magic, anything along those lines, this is all of my favorite witchy shows and tropes bundled up into one. Um, the main character has fallen on hard times and is forced to return to her hometown where she lives with her mother. Her mother then dies in a car accident, which she believes is an accident, but then come to find out there are people in town covering up the fact that this was a murder. And her mom is not the only person close to her who has died recently. And she's uncovering more and more secrets about this and more plots against her and her family and more tragedies that were not so accidental. Um, I barely, barely have a start on book two. The plot is kind of stalled out on that one and I haven't gotten back in the right headspace to finish it, but book one, I have a totally completed draft. Book number four is called Drowning. And I have about two thirds of this book written. It's a contemporary YA about a teen girl who has just suffered a major family tragedy. Um, her little brother's in a coma and her parents are trying to cope. So she is sent to spend the summer with her great aunt while they try to get a handle on their new normal and get him moved from like a nursing facility back into their home so they can take care of him and figure out what he needs on a daily basis and what they're going to be doing for him. So Leo, our narrator, she's not in a good place. She blames herself for what happened to her brother. She's angry, she's guilty, and she's depressed and frustrated and lonely. And now she's been sent to stay with her hoarder aunt on the other side of the country who doesn't like kids and doesn't really want her there. So she finds escape at the beach with some new friends that she makes there and they teach her how to surf. And she gets more and more obsessed with this. And as she is throwing all of her energy into preparing for a competition, she starts uncovering secrets at her aunt's house, including her cousin's bedroom, which is basically a shrine. And her cousin passed away when she was a teenager in a surfing accident. So of course there are ghosts involved um, and there uh, different convergences of plot points that I'm not describing very well because I don't want to give it all away. Um, it's not held up by anything in particular, but this is just a very slow book to write. It takes a lot of, out of me emotionally to work on it, um, which is why it's unfinished. I tend to work on it for like a month or two in the summer when the weather matches that in the book, which seems to make it easier for me to write. Um, but it's something that I still can only just peck away at like one little scene at a time. I can't sit down and marathon write it. Book number five is codenamed Prudence and Penny. And I started working on this when I was volunteering at the Historical Society back in Ohio. And it's about two sisters during the Civil War who are sent to a seminary, which is a girl's school in the Civil War era. And the younger sister, Penny, is a student there. She's about 14. And her older sister, Prudence, is a teacher. 
and the story is told through alternating diary entries between the sisters. But the problem I had is I got about 100 pages into it and I realized that while Penny was writing in a middle grade voice, Prudence was writing in a much more adult voice and I couldn't have them both in the same book. So I haven't figured out if I should split it into two volumes, how it should be marketed in which case, because I can't really say that book one is a middle grade book and then book two is an adult novel. That doesn't make sense. Um, so this one is again held up by some like marketing type of issues. Um, which, yeah, the, the marketing part of writing is the crappy part of writing, honestly. Um, but in general, there's just a lot wrong with it. I also discovered some major errors in my research like halfway through, so um, it needs to be started over to correct those problems. Book number six I'm calling Gray Magic right now. And it's a magic school story that's based off of a dream that I had. A lot of my books are actually based off of dreams that I had. Um, Colors in the Dark was a dream. Um, bits of Off the Rails came from a dream. Um, yeah, there's been several of them. Actually, the start of A.J. Marshall's book, I think, was also from a dream. That scene got edited out, but it still got me working on the story. Um, so I actually forgot about this book entirely until I was scrolling through my documents working on this video. The main character, Olivia Gray, is the daughter of the kingdom's white witch, basically Glinda, lawful good, highest ranking witch in the country. Um, good alignment, extra glitter. However, she did not know that the man that she hooked up with and intended to marry was a demon until after the fact. Now their daughter is the subject of an endless number of prophecies and they all boil down to her choosing good or evil on her 16th birthday and changing the balance of power in the kingdom. Her birthday is only a month away and not even she knows which way she's going to go. And the thing about Olivia is that she's a nice person but she also does not have the same emotional resonance as other people and this is partially based off of my autistic experience um but it's also just she doesn't have an innate sense of empathy um she can feel it for other people to a certain extent if they're close to her but nobody's been willing to get close to her. So it's something that she really struggles with. Um, this one gets the prize for least work out of all of them done. It's only 12 pages long. Um, I have no idea where it goes from there. I just think that it's a really cool idea and I really like what I've written on it so far. Book number seven is from way, way back. This is from probably 2013, maybe. It might even be older than that. And it's a uh, code name Beauty and the Werewolf, and it's exactly what it says on the tin. <laughs> I took more of the German angle on fairy tales with this. It is set in Germany and involves a lot of like fancy wood carvings that are enchanted. Um, and I had most of the story mapped out in my head, but then I moved and I lost the manuscript, which was not digital. It was handwritten. Um, and I never wrote down a full outline because I didn't know where it was going. And now I just have the opening chapter or thereabouts saved on my computer and I've never gone back to it. I'm not happy with what I have so far, but I'm not entirely sure why. So until I figure that out, I can't really proceed with the story. Book number eight is one that I actually started in college. So this is probably the oldest story on the list. Um, this one comes in a close second for at least work done at only 18 pages. And it's got a very like buffy feel to it with a modern witch who reads tarot for a living. She does um, like potions and charms and stuff for the local fairy population. And she once got a ticket for transporting a minotaur in the back of a pickup truck, 
which was an unsecured load. You're not allowed to do that in Ohio. Um, and she and her non-magical roommate get enlisted to help a grim, to help a grim reaper track down the person who has been killing death. And by that, I mean, grim reaper is a job title. There are multiple of them. And somehow a baby faced 16 year old who is now the last reaper, um, who got that position by having a funny last name, grim and winning a Darwin award. So it has this great offbeat sense of humor. It's really funny and quirky, but I have absolutely no plot for it. I don't know what's going on with this story. I just have those 18 pages. Um, and originally I was going to pull in a bunch of local lore because it's set in a town that I spent a lot of time in growing up. And I, I just, I don't have anything for it. Um, the local lore that I grew up with turned out to be false. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know where that's going. <laughs> Book number nine wins the prize for most work done. And this is the Gothic Ladies Literary Society. This one, now, imagine a book club. And it in that book club are all of your favorite 19th century female authors. Mary Shelley, the Brontes, Elizabeth Gaskell, they don't object when Jane Austen and Edgar Allan Poe show up, or even Charles Dickens. Now imagine that book club is armed to the teeth and uses magic to keep the undead from taking over the world. This is the premise behind Gothic Ladies. It's way more involved than that, but you get the gist. Um, the problem with this book is that it's a dual timeline story with a third person narrative and the editors and agents I've sent it to really don't like that. I haven't figured out why. I think that that is perfectly fine, but I'm getting accused of head hopping and that the timeline is too confusing, even though it's clearly labeled. Um, we, I have a really strong difference of opinion with editors and agents on ap appropriate narrative technique um, because it's similar to a lot of books that I grew up with, but that technique has now fallen out of favor and is considered unmarketable. So nobody wants to proceed with it. Um, anyway, that is a whole other rant on publishing that I am not going to get into here, but I have two finished versions of this book, two versions of the same book. Um, one of them in which the chapters alternate between the then and now perspectives and one where I split the book in half and have a prequel volume that is the past timeline and then the main narrative that is the present timeline. Um, the problem is that the prequel book doesn't have enough story to make sense as a single volume. It's more like a long short story or a novella type of thing. And it because there isn't enough story, it's kind of boring to read. But if I look at the other half of the book, at the present timeline, that one doesn't make any sense whatsoever once you take out all of those flashbacks and the historical timeline beside of it. So it really, really needs a good developmental editor. Um, and I'm talking about a massive developmental edit. This is the type of edit that would run me minimum $500, probably creeping up into like a thousand or $1,500. Um, so this is something that I have never been able to go further with. Um, if I had a local writing group or a critique group that I could share it with, I would do that. Actually down below in the comments, if you would like to be added to my beta reader list, um, leave me one of your social links, some way that I can contact it, contact you um, to get your email address and I will add you to my beta reader list. Um, anyway, that, that that's a whole other side. So those are nine books that I have started but have not been able to finish for one reason or another. Um, 
which one calls to you the most? Which one do you think is the most interesting? Which one do you want to read? Um, go over to the community tab and leave your vote there. I don't think I can put all of the titles I've discussed on that list, but I will try and put most of them up there if I can. There might have to be multiple polls. <laughs> so until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope you have something cute and fluffy to cuddle with that is a little bit less obnoxious than this one. Ciao.